But the man who did the interview was a young cameraman. He got the interview, he filmed it, he asked the questions. And I spoke to that man, Eric Dirkschmeid, a little earlier this evening. So I went to Moscow and I started off like uh, everybody in these days. You took a bundle of dollars or whatever and saw the concierge at the hotel. So uh, I said, look, there's a list of a few people and I gave him the list of Burgess and McLean and I said, see if you can find me any contact. And uh, two days later I had uh, a message that uh, a car was waiting for me outside and the, uh, the man would tell me how to. So that man gave me a phone number and we called uh, from a public phone uh, and uh, a voice came on and he said, oh boy, come over, but I must warn you, I have nothing to drink to offer to you. So I said, well, I think we can fix that one. She gave him the address and explained how to get there. It was in the middle of Moscow, but a very sinister building, very dark. And I walked up a couple of flo uh, uh, floors, I got a couple of stairs, and uh, a young man opened the door. And uh, behind him was Guy Burgess. It, it wasn't Guy Burgess who opened the door. But you went in, you had a drink. What happened was the young man was his, uh, well, obviously he was his lover, among other things. But he was also a KGB plant that uh, had to be expected. Now, uh, that young man was about my age at the time. I was 28. And um, he didn't really take to me because I think he was probably jealous in a way, because I was, uh, as I found out quite quickly, that I was the first man uh, Guy Burgess had uh, spoken to in English for, I don't know, three or four years probably. Uh, and that is how our contact started. I mean, it was started with a couple of bottles of whiskey and, and uh, me talking to him in his own language. He had a few glasses of whiskey and I then said, well, look, you know, I'm a, I'm a journalist. I, I even got a camera down in the car. Would you like to talk to me on camera? And he said, oh, why not, old boy? Let's go. I know a place. And he took me to this amazing derelict cemetery on uh, not very far from him. In the middle of Moscow, talking to a British defector, a Soviet spy. And uh, that, under the eyes of the KGB, was a... I didn't need, I didn't consider it was a daring thing, but it was pretty stupid, one must admit. Yeah, but the KGB didn't give you any problems? They didn't talk to you afterwards? They didn't try and get the tape from you or anything like that? No, and I think what really happened was it could have been one of two things. One was that they didn't know, which is unlikely, but it, it, it does happen because they weren't all that efficient either. Uh, or the other thing is that they really wanted this interview to go through to perhaps show other defectors uh, that uh, if they come over to Russia, they wouldn't be treated, uh, you know, they wouldn't send to a gulag or whatever. I mean, I think most people who've looked at it have the impression it's a rather sad reflection on his life in Moscow. What, was that your impression shared at the time? Well, I mean, my impression was quite quickly... Uh, uh, yeah taken by, by a man on his way down. I mean, he was completely, I mean, he was so isolated, so lonesome, so bored, so everything, that uh, when, when it came to the end of the interview, I mean, the one, he pleaded with me. He said, for God's sake, please help me get back. So I said, look, uh, you know, you're considered to be a traitor. He said, and, and you're gonna go to jail. He said, oh, I wouldn't mind, I wouldn't mind at all. So, that was my impression, you know, that that's Burgess a, was just that's a burned amazing. out case. He, he would rather go to jail in, in, in Britain than stay in... That's, that's exactly what he said. It was a kind of mea culpa, because he knew he was dying. He, he knew he was killing himself drinking. And, uh, of course, the Russians gave him as much vodka as he wanted. He was totally isolated, completely isolated, although he had a certain freedom of movement. And that's why I said that the, the, the KGB may have slipped up because they didn't follow him. Mm. They should have followed me, but they didn't follow me. So somehow or other I got away and then I don't know how it happened. You know, I'm, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not a magician. And I had no idea the risk that we were running, but he must have known it. 
but he didn't care. He, he was beyond the point of caring. Eric Dershman, thank you very much for your recollections of what is an amazing piece of history. Thank you. Thank you.